first off, it's a huge honor to uh, have you as our first of the uh, Sports Enterprise Management Quarterly Speaker Series. But my goodness, how do you have time to breathe? <laughs> I find time. I am actually pretty good at self-care. So I work hard, but I play hard. <laughs> Just to let everybody know who's with us, um, this is a Q&A. Senator Nobles has said, okay, we're just gonna go into a Q&A. And so I've got a bunch of questions and I will be asking for your questions here in a few minutes. So please get them ready. And when you do, let's use the raise hand function of Zoom. It's right in the, the reactions tab. And then that way I'll make sure you know to get to you. Uh, and uh, Professor Jane has, has lots of questions as well. And so we're gonna be recognizing her several times. Um, but Senator Nobles, first off, thank you very much for being part of the Sports Enterprise Management Board. My question for you is about your own involvement in sports. Uh, it's kind of been from the beginning. Yeah, what is so interesting is um, based on my background, which um, Ms. Jane, is that my pronouncing your last name correctly? Um, already shared with everyone we lived a very unstable life. And so when I was much younger, my family um, was not placed in recreational sports. I mean, my mom was addicted to drugs. She mismanaged her money. Um, and so it was not until high school, and it might've been after I was placed in foster care or maybe just before, I can't remember, but it wasn't until high school. And um, the very first time I went out to do kind of track trials, um, and beat everyone except for a couple of really fast um, seniors that I even knew I was good at track. And so I also got involved uh, my freshman year of high school in basketball, but I was a state athlete and started out on varsity and um, was not as good at basketball, but actually got to play on the Tacoma Community College basketball team and did cheer at the University of Puget Sound and I like to share with folks, I made the team at TCC. And if you know me, I definitely, or if you've seen me, especially with athletic attire, I definitely look like I can do some damage. Um, but it, I, I look better than, <laughs> than I can play a lot of sports. And basketball is one of them. So at TCC, Tacoma Community College, I actually probably got only about three minutes of playing time the entire season. But it was such an incredible year to be a part of the team because that year, the Tacoma Community College women's and men's basketball teams went to state. And it was the first time the women's team had done so in 20 years. And we ended up placing fifth in state, but we were West Division champs. Um, and our pictures used to be in the gym. And I think during a remodel, I haven't actually been there, but I can just imagine they have more recent pictures. But um, I just, you know, I, I love athletics because I'm a competitive person. And I built so many incredible friendships and relationships because of sports. Well, that, that's my big question is, is this, what does sports mean to the community? I know that community is absolutely huge in your life. Yeah, absolutely. Well, because I um, had the opportunity to be an athlete and because I love sports and the competitiveness and camaraderie so much, I decided to become a coach and I have similarly coach as many sports as, as I've tried to play, um, but I've coached volleyball um, when I taught at Life Christian. I also coached basketball there for middle school and high school. I've coached cheerleading for over a decade. All four of my children are athletes, everything from cheer and gymnastics to basketball, soccer, football. Um, but, you know, I think sports is where community actually gets to come together and have you know, a common goal, multiple common goals. I mean, we want to be the best and successful, but we also want to be encouraging of each other. We want to help to develop skills in each other. I mean, that's what I loved about being an athlete, the patience of my um, teammates and my coaches, um, how much they inspired me. And as a coach, I really appreciated this opportunity to motivate and inspire some young person who had never dribbled a ball before or never been tossed up in a stump before that this is something they in fact could achieve. Um, and to do that with other folks from your community and to be successful, right? To When I see the looks on you know a, a young person's face or a team's face when someone scores their first you know, basketball hoop, or, you know, when we hit a very difficult stunt in cheerleading, I mean, it's priceless. 
but you're building community in the same way that you're building, you know, this smaller team. Um, and what I love, especially for coaching for the university place, um, Vikings cheerleading is um, so many of my girls are graduating now and they have continued to cheer together for years. I coached my um, 14 year old daughter since she was two and to see her grow up in community as a classmate um, with confidence with so many other girls, um, it's just really, really beautiful, but they have her back. She still does cheerleading now for the high school versus our rec team with a lot of these girls, but they're better together because they have been building team and community together for years. And that makes them really good athletes. So Senator, um, this past year and a half has been incredibly difficult. I mean, I've got an 18 year old. She didn't get to go to high school football games, which was a great big, um, you know, something that she wanted to do. She was just, you know, she wanted to be with her friends. Um, and then of course there have been some horrendous uh, social justice difficulties around the country. Uh, and we have suffered some of that here. You've stepped into government right in the middle of all of that. Um, can sports help bring us back? Yeah, I, I personally think so. Because when I think about what happens sometimes, whether it's on a court or a field, and when people walk up, I feel like the question is, but can you play? Like, regardless of your background, the color of your skin, I mean, can you play? Because <laughs> if you can play, get in, let's do this together, right? And we can be complete strangers, but it's it's a place where the, the team and the bigger than me is what matters. And what, what was terrible during, you know, one of the things that was terrible during this pandemic, especially as we faced um, kind of this heightened moment of racial tension is that lack of community. Um, now, for some people, it probably was better that they could only access others on the internet and not in person with some of the, you know, things that they were saying and doing. But for many of us who, um, like on teams, find a lot of support and encouragement and inspiration um, or just a hug or a high five or a fist bump in team and in community, it's really hard to deal with, you know, the COVID um, with the pandemic of COVID and um, the pandemic of this racial injustice in isolation. Um, but I do think when we um, focus on, you know, this is bigger than me and there is a common goal where we wanna be united, we wanna be successful together. And we don't want to, we don't want to discriminate based on someone's socioeconomic class, the color of their skin, their ability, we want to be inclusive. Can you play? Are you willing to help us to achieve the goal of the team? And if so, then you're in. And I think, you know, this this year being away from each other, we got away from a lot of those things, and including in my family where, you know, my kids are athletes. Um, I mean, they're also in orchestra and amazing, you know, scholars, but to not be with their teammates, to not have that social aspect was really heavy on them. And so now that we can actually play sports, I've already been to Cheney Stadium a couple of times and I'll be back there this weekend. The kids are on the field and breathing in fresh air and with their teammates with masks and socially distant. Um, but it has been so important for their mental health and for their well being um, to compete and to be a part of something larger to them and probably just to get out the freaking house dealing with mom and mom's chores all day long. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I'm ready to play on your team, but I gotta ask you, how did you just seem so strong? When I heard Professor Jane's introduction of you, and you know, have gotten to know you a little bit, um, your your background is one where a lot of people wouldn't be very strong. How come you did it and others don't? Yeah, I don't give up. I, I won't lie. Every all all of those experiences that were shared, they weren't easy. They weren't experiences that I would wish on anyone. But one thing that I know about myself, I may feel like giving up, and I have my legislative assistant Danielle on the line um, and so she knows she's she's had to coach me out of situations where I'm like let's we don't even got to do this let's just stop but at the end of the day I give myself space to feel that you know I have real feelings it feels low it feels like failure and that's okay but as long as you stay in the game as long as you don't give up as long as you come back I mean if I have to take a moment to lay down and take a nap or sleep on it overnight or consult with people who are very, very wise and who will encourage me, I do that. 
But at the end of the day, what I know about me is I will keep going. I am a true competitor. I'm not scared of doing the really hard and difficult things and to explore territory where others haven't, or in the case of state Senate, where others haven't for a full decade. Um, so I'm, I'm willing to lean into things that are that are difficult and to stick with it um, so that I can you know, be successful. And in the sense that a lot of things from my background and story, and it was survival. I had to keep going for my brothers and for my mom. My brother, my youngest brother, um, he, this is, I don't even know the date. Today is May, what's today? May 13th, I think. Yeah. Um, I just lost my brother two weeks ago and he would have been 35 on May 22nd. Oh, and sorry. that was really difficult for, thank you, really difficult for our family. But similar to when I was a child, I'm the person that has to, you know, be the stability for my mom and my brothers and, you know, have a plan and be organized. So I, I take the time to, to grieve and to, you know, feel pain and hurt, but I have this, I've been blessed with this amazing ability to keep going, to push through, you know, to say, gosh, this hurts and this sucks, but to not give up. Wow. Well, as um, uh, one of my uh, cohorts uh, just said so sorry for your loss for sure thank you um let's get to matters uh of a broader community basis uh you've been in the state senate now for gosh almost four months and everything's not perfect yet what do you want to fix yeah honestly uh similar to our you know academic institutions our government institutions i believe um were not built for people who look like me. And many of these institutions were built to exclude people who look like me. Um, and so that is something that we have to fix because yes, I'm a senator, a senator in an institution that has ran a very specific way for a very long time. So figuring out how to do really good work for my community, which includes you know parts of Tacoma and all the wonderful cities um, that were mentioned earlier, but how to make sure that I'm not accepting of a system that simply was not built for people like me, but that I can, you know, learn the rules of engagement and be very clear about creating um, a path that's going to work for me and for future, you know, working class community members, future black women, future moms who want to function in this system, because we do need to be able to um, accomplish really big legislation and change around housing, healthcare, education, and employment. Um, but it, it is just a fact that there are really difficult systems that you have to navigate even when you become a senator. So what I hope to accomplish is to learn how to do really good work for my community and stay in alignment with my values and who I am and not change. And, you know, remember every part of my story, when I experienced homelessness, when I experienced foster care, when I experienced abuse, to remember what it felt like, what it smelt like, you know, what, what um, the environment was like, remember that I stayed hopeful and to try to gain that for more community members, to try to help them to have stories like mine of you know, turning that trial into triumph. So that is what I hope to achieve, just really good for my district and my community and not to get caught up um, in a system that doesn't always align with who I am as a human being. I just wanted to uh, invite everyone into the conversation. You know, please uh, raise your hand. I am going to give Professor Jane the first question, but I'll go ahead with one more question before I get to everybody else. Um, Senator Nobles, I've, I've grown up in sports. And when you say, you know, can you play? I totally get that. And, you know, and that's where I've been on fields. And we don't even know what color that, that we were. We just knew, can you play? How come our system that you just talked about can't be that way? <laughs> Again, here is my opinion. Easy question. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly believe it's deeply rooted in the country that we live in. 